Welcome back everybody. As you probably guessed from the title of the video, there is some nefarious things going on with the recently passed omnibus bill. And uh, so what is an omnibus bill before we get into that? Um, it's something that's been happening recently in probably the last decade where whenever there's an emergency, a whole bunch of things get thrown into one piece of legislation that are completely not related to each other at all. And they're typically very high value in terms of dollars, pieces of legislation, and they're typically rushed through for no apparent reason other than to ensure that the people who are voting on them can't actually read them. Uh, so in this case, that's exactly what happened. So as of Tuesday morning at like 1 a.m. DC time, uh, the House was given a copy of this bill. It's a 2,700 page bill with very specific legalese type of information. So it's not a super easy thing to read through as I just read it recently, most of it. And um, the important parts anyway, let's be real. Um, it's not easy reading. And then these folks were expected to vote on it on Wednesday. That would be the House of Representatives folks. And um, there was a gun control group. I've heard rumors of who it was. You guys can probably guess that told them there was it was good to go and there was no anti-gun junk in there. Well, that's just simply not true. And so the House voted on it. And then after that, the next day, Thursday, the Senate voted on it. And of that, um, I think if I can find them, I'll throw a list up here on your screen. There was 39 House members and 18 senators who were Republicans that voted for this piece of legislation. The Senate part of that is very important. Uh, the Democrats only had 49 votes, so they wouldn't have been able to pass without the 18 senators who voted for it. Um, so everything I'm about to tell you that has changed in terms of U.S. law as of this bill could have been prevented if they just stuck together and all held out until these pieces of legislation were removed from the bill, but they chose not to do that. Um, whether they knew what they were doing or not, I'll leave that up to you guys to figure out. But basically, there's two different things that are in this bill, versions of them anyway. So in the past, I think in 2018, there was something introduced in Congress called the Violence Against Women Act, and then the NICS denial notification was uh, tried in Congress before that as well. Um, and they do some things that definitely do not positively impact uh, gun rights in America in any way, uh, despite what their name may say. So the first thing that's in this bill uh, has to do with the NICS checks. So for folks who don't know, NICS is a system where they check your background before you purchase a firearm at your FFL. And of the people who fail those, um, over 90% of them are false failures. So if your name is John Smith and somebody named John Smith is a known murderer and he lives in your, your zip code or whatever the case may be, you're probably always going to fail the next test. Literally every time you buy a gun, you will fail it, and then they'll appeal it, and then they'll realize it's actually you and not the John Smith the killer, and then you get your gun after a set amount of days, depending on where you live. That's kind of how it works. However, there are people who legitimately fail the next check because they are known felons who are prohibited by law from purchasing firearms, and there's you know anywhere between 5 to 10% of the folks who fail fall into that category. Previously, it has been the job of you know the federal government through the ATF and the Attorney General to go and prosecute those folks. However, very rarely does anyone ever get uh, prosecuted for relying on a NICS or lying on a gun application, which is a Form 4473. Well-known example is Hunter Biden, of course, lied on his, and uh, as we know, nothing has ever happened to him. But that's not unique. Very rarely, like less than one percent of the time, does anyone actually get prosecuted for that. Well. Their goal is to, I guess, fix that, but also include the false positives as if they are criminals. And what they've done is twofold. So the ATF, through this bill, can appoint any a local, like a county district attorney or a city district attorney or a state district attorney to essentially function as a federal Department of Justice district attorney and then go after people for ATF federal laws through that. So they're called special U.S. attorneys in the legislation. Um, but what it does is let them enforce all federal gun control at the local level. So it's not that they couldn't do that before. It's that a lot of states have restrictions against it. Like, for example, Mississippi has uh, Second Amendment sanctuary status. Montana does as well. Texas, to sort of an extent, does. And a lot of states also have legislation that if anything is made in the state, sold in the state, and doesn't leave the state, then it's not subject to federal gun control. Um, Kansas is an example of that. So in theory, if the federal agents don't get involved, a company could manufacture a silencer, uh, sell it to someone without a background, well, without a form 
the appropriate form for it, whether form one or four, that's for another video. And then um, the person could own it legally all without going through the NFA process according to state law. Well, what this does is it usurps all of that through federal, you know, the federal deputization of these attorneys general. Um, so that's one thing they're trying to go after is all of your Second Amendment sanctuaries. Many of you may live in them. With this, they're trying to eliminate those uh, capabilities. And how would you do that without the actual men from government with guns? Well, the ATF's got an answer for that as well, because there's very few ATF field agents for folks that don't know that. It's just there's not a lot of them. Um, there's more and more every year, but there's just not a lot compared to your regular law enforcement. So this bill also allows them to deputize sheriffs, police officers, Indian tribe law enforcement officials, any local uh, law enforcement official can now be deputized with ATF agent powers. And ATF agent powers are very specific on a number of different levels, but particularly when it comes to federal gun control. So just as an example, right, I have a special occupational tax, so I'm an SOT holder, meaning I can have machine guns, I can make machine guns, I can make silencers, I can have silencers, all of those sorts of things without going through the process that normal people do. Well, a regular local cop can't come inspect me. A local cop can't come ask me for my forms, ask me for my documentation, ask me to prove that what I'm doing is legal. Only ATF agents can do that up until now. Uh, but with this bill, if they deputize through this piece of legislation, the local law enforcement officials where I am, my local law enforcement officials will be able to do that to me. And it's not just me. Like, uh, for instance, all the, all the solvent traps that were recently you know, denied or whatever by the ATF, in the past, before this piece of legislation, it would take an ATF agent to go out there and inspect that person's home to see if they had a solvent trap. Now, they don't have to do that. They can just send the denial letter to your local law enforcement, deputize them through this piece of legislation as an ATF agent with ATF powers, and your local cops can come do it to you. So it's not just these guys, it's not just people like me, it's every regular gun-owning American who's now lost part of their rights to own firearms the way they choose to because of this piece of legislation. Um, so those are really kind of the two big pieces of this. Um, but when it was happening, uh, I know for sure Gun Owners of America was going after it. I, NAGR put stuff out as well. Um, uh, Chip Roy, who is a congressman, was saying that there was anti-gun parts of this bill. And yet, for whatever reason, these Republicans voted for it anyway. Um, again, the list will be here. Um, but why am I doing this video, right? Because the legislation is already passed and surely Joe Biden will sign it because it contains $14 billion of aid for Ukraine. And we can't just not do that apparently and not also make it part of a $1.5 trillion bill. But again, those are videos for another day. Anyway, the reason I'm doing this video now is because it was very easily put into this piece of legislation. Um, in theory, a lot of people have high hopes that, you know, in, in the midterms that we will uh, Republicans, conservatives, libertarians, non-leftists will take control of the House and Senate. If they do that, this can very easily be reversed. It can, if there's another omnibus bill, we can just put legislation in there to reverse this. So contact your legislators. Again, there will be a link down below for you guys to do so. Um, and let them know this is simply unacceptable, especially the ones that voted for it. But even the ones that didn't, let them know that you want this reversed. Um, because, again, it's just incrementalism in terms of what they're doing to erode our natural right to keep and defend fire, keep firearms and defend our families and our nation as we see fit in any way that we see fit. Um, so I suppose with that, we will close the video out. It's bad news, but it's reversible and more easily reversible than most things in terms of gun control um, out there. So again, close the video out. If you guys have questions, you can post them below. All my social media is here on your screen if you guys want to follow me for up-to-date versions of this because I did post about this on Wednesday. Um, but taking, making videos, it's a little bit harder to do so. But on my social media, you can just jump on there, share stuff, and prevent, theoretically, stuff like this from going forward. Um, so there is that. There's also the uh, email that you see here, which basically if you're subscribed here, and you're not subscribed rather, and you like this type of video, we do a lot of videos like this exposing what's going on, uh, definitely hit the subscribe button. But even if you're subscribed, you're not seeing two to four videos a week uh, because of an algorithm censoring your eyes from my content, the email here will go out at most once a month. And it has all the videos since the previous email. So that way there's no big tech uh, giant censoring your eyes from my content. And then we have deals on all of the things that you could expect. If you like this channel, guns, gear, etc. Uh, that daily deals email goes out every single day.
and it saves you guys some time and some money because if it's in the email, it's the cheapest I know of on the internet at that time, and you don't have to look for it because I've already done the looking for you. Uh, so that's it. That's all I got for you guys. Thank you all for watching. I truly appreciate each and every one of you, and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video where we're hopefully not talking about this type of crap.